as we have a quorum, I, I'm going to start. Uh, we'll I'll open the meeting at 7.01 and ask for any adjustments to the agenda. Recording in progress. Anyone have any additions? Okay, uh, Jim was going to introduce something. He wants to talk about training, but he thought he would wait until March when we see about our ballot item. But he, he does have some interest in us looking into some training and he has a video to share with us. So uh, we'll, I'll assume the agenda then is adept. We're gonna adapt the agenda as sent out by unanimous consent. And now we have public comment. Oh, good. Uh, Stephen, did you sign on? I can't get in with except through audio. Okay. I Yep. And so I've just opened up public comment. So it's perfect timing. Well, I yep. want to comment on uh, the process by which this uh, proposal was. Uh, Donna, you sent me a bunch of emails, but none of them discuss or invite a proposal. So how a proposal <laughs> appears. Okay, well, 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 Stephen, okay. Do you have any comment, public comment, on something that's not on the agenda? The proposal is. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I don't have. Okay. Um, well, yeah, I, I'll just briefly overview that we have 51 million in cell, cell improvement money being proposed. And we have 14 million for regional PSAP so, uh, startup and, and support. And that we need to be crafting a plan that integrates with those, most of the broadband money, 150, even 250 million, uh, could cover the cost of fiber towers, redundancy uh, generators, et cetera. So we really need an integrated plan here. And that's not what this RFP asks. It. So we need to, we need to put, put, put an effort on creating an RFP to get an integrated plan. Okay. That's uh, it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Topic that's not on the agenda? All right, we'll go on to minutes from January 13th. Entertain a motion to accept the minutes. So moved. Uh, that was, thank you. Second? A second. That was Doug Hoyt, thank you. Any additions? Edits? Well, I have, a, I have a discussion. About the minutes? Yes. Okay. I think the part labeled City of Montpelier Council uh, discussion is incomplete. I, my memory is a, not clear about what was actually said at the meeting, but I know it was said at the City Council and Donna moved that the Council vote to terminate. I did not City move. Well, you offered I'm sorry. No. support. You offered. I can finish. I think you can yeah. contradict me. Excuse me. You're absolutely right. My my mistake. Um, you certainly offered support for terminating CVPSA, and I I think the minutes should reflect that. Uh, Doug Hoyt and myself among others, thought that was a very premature motion, <clears throat> suggestion. And I think that discussion was reflected in the minutes. Um, but I don't have a recording of the minutes, so I have to leave it to other folks' memory of what took place. But I'm pretty sure we had a vigorous discussion at our board meeting about what took place at the council, which is not reflected in the minutes. Okay. And anyone else uh, have that interpretation? I would, I, I, I haven't. Uh, excuse uh, me, study, but excuse I me, Stephen. Stephen, I'm talking yeah. to the board about their minutes, and then you can have comment. I just want to know, 
that I did not propose a motion. I proposed a discussion because of some of the behind the scenes talk that I was hearing. And I thought, indeed, it was a healthy discussion. And as far back as October, when we had our Televate presentations to the joint city councils, I was very clear then, as I had been in the past, I'm more in favor of any coalition than one that's not functioning. And let's face it, folks, we worked very hard and we've done some good work, but we're not where we want to be. We do not have the buy-in we like. And if it takes another format to do that, fine. I was quite pleased that the city gave us so much time. But the minutes don't have to reflect all my comments. There were no motions. So there is a YouTube of the meeting, of both city council and ours. So you can check it out. And um, I definitely use uh, John Odom as my guide. You keep your minutes very, very minimal and you back and you really, your recording is there if you wanna use that as backup. Well, That's my say, interpretation. Somebody else would like to talk about their interpretation? Your, I, yeah. Kim, you've already spoke, I'm please. Not, Kim, you've already spoke. I'm asking other people. Uh, Brent, I think you you listened. Uh, Doug listened. Uh, Justin, you might have listened. Jim, I don't know if you got to chime in at the meeting. Um, well, I was just thinking that <clears throat> with my experience in the past, if someone had a disagreement with something in the minutes, they were entitled to add a comment that was strictly theirs uh, if the rest of the board agreed to it, but it doesn't necessarily but mean- That's what that. I'm asking. If the board agrees to that change, then he can make a motion. I'm not, I'm not suggesting go. a change. I'm No, I'm not suggesting a change. That would be something the board would have to approve. But I'm just saying if someone wanted to add a comment that was a sort of a dissenting opinion, I've seen that done before, that's all. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's identified as a dissenting opinion, not approved by the whole board. I don't know if you'd be able to do that in succinct fashion, Kim. Donna, can I speak? Steve Whitaker? Uh, uh, just, I'll just check anyone else from the board who is there <clears throat> who has an opinion about their minutes. Uh, Doug Hoyt. I would like to uh, agree with uh, Donna's statement that she did not. I'll say it again. She did not make any motion that could be interpreted as a motion for the city council to put anything on any agenda, any agenda or any ballot for anything. <clears throat> she did offer a fair piece of information about the discussion about continued support for the public safety authority. I and and in addition to Kim, uh, made several comments and uh, encouraging support for the Public Safety Authority. If I'm not mistaken, Justin also offered some of his comments, uh, which were a little bit different than what I or Kim may have said. Uh, but I interpret those comments as uh, being pretty straightforward, honest, and concise as to what was going on. Um, and we do remember our meeting on the 13th was before Montpelier's meeting on the 20th. That's all. I'm just. I agree. Okay. So um, what was in the minutes was our discussion of what was coming up at Montpelier City Council. Right. Okay, and, and the short discussion that happened on the 12th. That's uh, all. I, I, even myself, I got confused here. This was before the 20th when I did the presentation. This was, our meeting was on the 13th, City Council met on the 12th. And it was on the 12th that the Montpelier City Council put the discussion on their agenda for the 20th. So within this meeting, if you all want to have a statement about how you feel the 20th went, great. But January 13th, the 20th didn't happen yet. That's all I want to clarify. Now go ahead, Doug. No, you're correct. And I was, I was thinking. In that case, the minutes are correct. Um, 
and as I said, I was a, it was a confusing time, so I don't have any objection to the minutes because you're right, they couldn't have. Then, yeah, but they all ran together uh, and, and I got confused myself, so. Uh, but there's something, uh, the minutes are not correct then in that they, they refer to the discussion on the city council and maybe that should just be stricken. No, because on the 12th, there was a just brief discussion that put it on the agenda for the 20th. Oh, okay. Well, um, and that's what they, I mean, I think that's, you know, what it says here and that it would be discussed on the 20th. Montpelier City Council meeting on January 12th regarding placing an autumn item on the ballot for city voters to decide whether Montpelier should withdraw from CVPSA will be discussed on January 20th. That's accurate. Okay, that sounds, that clarification, I don't have any objection to the minutes. Uh, Madam I Chair, I call a question. No, no. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you have no choice but to call the question. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of the minutes, say aye. Madam Chair, point of order. Yes. Just for, just for clarification, <clears throat> calling the question is a motion to cease debate. And if two thirds of the board does not want to cease debate, they're welcome to debate it. I thought it had been clarified, but it's yeah. call, call, yeah. call a question just means well, that you take a vote to cease debate. And if you don't want to, you keep debating. Okay, so uh, I thought of indeed if there was an objection, that's why I paused. So I, I missed it. Do I need to make a vote on calling the question? Yeah, you make a vote on ceasing debate and then okay. that okay. passes you. Okay. I'm not There's trying to stop anyone from speaking. I just thought we had already resolved that. But. No, and um, and this is one I just haven't used that much, Jim, so in my Robert's Rules of Order. So I would assume it needs a second. Um, if we're going to vote on it. No, not on not on calling the question. No. Okay, but we do vote on it. Okay. okay. But it needs two thirds majority to, to pass. All right. Thank you. Thank you for uh, let, qualifying that. So, all those in favor of ceasing debate, say aye. 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 No. Uh, okay. Uh, and all those opposed, I got one no from Doug no. and one from Kim. So so now call. we have to do roll call. But I just want to make sure we needed it. Okay. Uh, Brent, do you have everybody's name down? Do you want to do that roll call vote? Yes. <clears throat> okay. So, Donna? Uh, yes. Doug? No. Kim? No. Uh, let's see. Jim? Yes. Aye. Justin? Yes. Sally? Aye. Will? Point of order. Sally and Will don't get to vote on these items. Yes, they do. Um, point of order. <laughs> you're, not, you're, you're, you're the public and have not been given the floor. Uh, so this, so this I'm is, sorry, this Will, what did you say? I, I didn't get I that I say one. I. Thank you. Did we and miss? then Brent, and I say I. So let's see. Six to two? Six to two, yep. Six to two, the ayes have it. Okay. So now we're going to the motion on the floor to pass the minutes of January 13th. All in favor say, Are I, you gonna let me call me? Madam Chair, there's a motion on the floor and a vote on the way. Yeah, it, it, it's the board's minutes. Um, okay, so all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Great, passes. Thank you. I added to the agenda, I would like to discuss some 
small gift as a token, Bev Hill and Chris Heffern have been helping us as being treasurer and assistant treasurer for several years now. And I've thanked them, but I haven't given them anything. And, and I thought whether it's flowers or candies that we should, uh, or we can't, I don't think we can give them cash, but I think we can give them some other kind of thank you uh, recognition because they do work for a uh, city of Montpelier. And this is done within that workflow as well as the volunteer time that Bev does. Um, so would you support maybe a, a gift? And if so, how much? Uh, Kim? I'd move that the board issue a resolution of thanks for their dedicated work and appreciate that they were um, long-term, very reliable folks. And uh, I don't think we should give them money. They were volunteers, except one of them's a city employee. No, I was suggesting flowers or something. I, I didn't mean money, Kim. Well, flowers is fine. In a certificate? Even a with, gift with certificate. A resolution of, with a resolution of thanks. Which I would allow the chair to draw. Okay, I wrote down the words long term, reliable, to be included. But your motion has no gift of flowers or candy or I'll, such. I'll amend it to add flowers at the discretion of the chair. Okay, do you want to put a, a, a range of dollar to that? <laughs> Somebody other than me has to know. I don't know what a posy would cost. I don't know what a what a bouquet of red roses would cost. So you a lot cheap, a lot cheaper after Monday. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I will wait, yeah. Sally. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I don't know who's bought flowers recently. I, I myself um, is. I mean, I don't think fifty would go very far. I think it like more like seventy five. Am I wrong? Well, can we say up to like 75 and I'll try to get it for 50? I'll go into Bactonica. They'll usually work with me. But you decide the amount, um, somebody. Um, I'm well, I think I think they're in a different category. I think Bev was a pure volunteer. And uh, much as I admire uh, Chris Heth. Hepburn, she is a city employee. So. Okay. You want to clarify that within your motion? Well, you got me stumped on a dollar amount. I <laughs> okay. Okay. 20. If, if everyone else is sort of, I mean, are you comfortable making a motion dollars. to buy them flowers without a dollar amount board? I'm, I'm just always assuming there's usually a guideline there. This it all depends where you're going to go get the flowers. If you're going to go to a flower shop, you're going to pay premium dollars. If you're going to go over to Shaw's and pick up a bouquet of flowers, that's an entirely different matter. You know, in light of the fact that uh, downtown businesses are still trying to get out of where they're coming from, um, I would suggest an alternative that uh, a gift certificate to any one of the eateries in Montpelier would mm -hmm. be sufficient, acceptable, and would make things work. That's okay. just my opinion. It's so, acceptable to me if I made a motion. About, okay, fifty dollars each, a food that's gift more, certificate. More than enough. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. Dinner certificate, I think, is perfect. Okay, an eatery. All right. So I have. <laughs> Force Kim to sort of change his motion. <laughs> and my understanding, you're you're agreeable about doing the resolution of thank you for their uh, longtime reliable service, and also getting a fifty dollar eatery gift certificate for both of them. That's fine. Okay. Is is there a second to that motion? Second it. Second it. Okay. Uh, 
Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Okay. Um, the update for the Public Safety Authority ballot items and the at-large seat. Luckily, as it turned out, Montpelier decided not to do a mail-in, so we didn't have to do a separate ballot. And we really owe lots of thank yous to Barry and Montpelier City Clerk. John Odom in particular was very helpful, as well as the office, office assistants, Jody Norway and Barry, and Mary Smith in Montpelier, who really help us with these things. So I just want to mention their names and that there's no cost to us for the ballot items. And also at large, I believe the only one I know of is Kim Cheney running. I think that's correct. Okay. And if anyone else has a comment about that or questions, we'll move on to the next item. A discussion of the phase two telecommunication work, and we do have Rick Burt here. Burke, sorry. Um, and I did pass that out. Uh, Rick, would you like to open the discussion or do you want to just take questions? I'd be happy to take uh, questions. Anyone? Uh, yeah, who authorized who authorized the proposal or who solicited the proposal? Uh, I'm sorry, Stephen, if you want to be recognized, you may. Uh, right now, oh. we're going to have questions from the board, and then we'll ask for questions from the public. So I see Kim's so hand you, went up, and then Justin's the hand went up. Stephen? Last you're time you order. said that, you skipped me on the minutes. Uh, I did, because it's a board matter. Um, Kim, you're first. Well, I, I have various questions for Rick, but I want to start out by saying I didn't get this from you, Donna. I got it from Whitaker, and I got it yesterday morning. And so I don't, it's much too early to discuss the merits of it, but I do have some questions for Rick. And my primary question is, do you or your firm have any experience in uh, soliciting Homeland Security grants and what kind of data must be in an application for such a grant? Well, uh, over the course of 20 years, we have uh, been able to secure over 500, um, 500 million dollars in grant funds from a variety of different sources. Uh, NTIA being the largest of them, uh, they ran the uh, Broadband Technologies Opportunity Program. And out of that, we were able to secure for three different entities but two different entities actually, a, a little over $200 million. Um, other grants came from uh, Homeland Security for, you know, entities like District of Columbia and the National Capital Region and some additional funds for Los Angeles County and their regional networks. Uh, so the, the answer to the question, is, Kim, is that yes, uh, we have experience. Um, typically in all grant documents, there is a a funding uh, document and that funding document actually outlines the process to under which an entity has to uh, pursue and, 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 and process documents that the that the the grant administrating office will tender. So, you know, that in that situation, you basically follow the guidelines um, that have been established by the funding entity. Um, for example, right now, there's uh, uh, there's over $60 billion in federal funds being offered to broadband communities. And so those, those funding documents haven't been fully distributed, but they will soon be out. And some have gone out in different formats. Um, but, the, you know, the direct answer is yes, we have experience in, in, in drafting um, um, documents on behalf of our cost, uh, on behalf of, um, of, of government agencies in pursuing of federal dollars. Homeland well, Security. I, I, I do have one follow up to that, Rick. Yes, sir. As you know, 
this organization doesn't have any money to purchase equipment. Yes, sir. There's nothing in the budget that would, at least in the coming year, support acquisition of anything. And what we need is expertise in assembling the data that would encourage a grant uh, provider to give us a grant. And I understand that's connected with uh, governance and that's a separate subject at the moment. But um, I don't know how this project makes any sense at all when we don't have any money to buy anything with and we don't currently have any means established and having listened to legislative discussion uh, nobody wants to hear about lmr when they're talking about broadband they're exclusive subjects and they just don't want to mix the two of them so i'd like some assurance from you that what you're doing is essentially providing data to a known grant funder for land mobile Recording in progress. Okay, and the next hand that was up was Justin. Correct. Thank you for preparing this. So, I, so my understanding is similar to Rick's, and I think we should, Stephen, can you mute yourself? I'm pretty sure it's you, Steve. Okay. Maybe it's me. Might be me. I might be getting feedback on my own mic. Um, all right. So anyway, my understanding was consistent with Rick's just in response to Kim, which is that this RFP is essentially us um, just showing the world that we're serious and that we're ready to do stuff and we're ready to move forward and we like are to be taken seriously, which is not something that it has happened before. Uh, my question for you, Rick, is because I don't know a lot about this stuff, admittedly, but Whitaker has all these concerns concerns about an integrated broadband LMR cellular system. Do you have, um, and I, Donna, I would ask that Stephen be able to pose the question. I, I wonder if you have any thoughts on um, 
on Stephen's on Stephen's thoughts regarding having an integrated system. I got to do I'm something sure. about the background noise. I'm having a hard time hearing. I don't know what it is. I think it's from caller whoever is calling. I think it's you, Stephen. Whoever is yep. running the meeting, can you just mute Stephen? That I've never it. had to do that, so uh um, worked. You've never had to mute Steven? I, I've never done it. <laughs> I do it a couple I times. I might have a week. wanted to, but I've never done it. Um, All right. This, so it's, was now it, it's a, it's a the uh, the the, uh, the background noise is gone. All right. Great. So you know, I I, I want to speak to I want to answer your question in, in in a couple of different ways. First, I want to base it on the requirements and needs that were established by the end users within Central Vermont. The stakeholders have participated in in our interviews and in defining their requirements as we put the assessment report to, together. Um, you know, there, there, there is the, the, their primary interest and, and, and what's, in my opinion, the best interest of Central Vermont Public Safety Communications is to focus on replacing and upgrading your LAM mobile radio communications network. Um, the that is that is first and foremost at the top of the you know the the stakeholders that we interviewed and that we um, you know that we documented and we 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 articulated their needs in in our report um, for all to read and to have an opinion on. Um, they they certainly are the end users that we need to look out for and the and the communities that they they serve and represent. The idea of, of integrating broadband and uh, land mobile radio together uh, is is certainly a current um, process, and it, it's good to have more tools and communication options in your in your toolkit for public safety. However, as was expressed to us on a number of occasions, that the cellular networks uh, in your communities do not necessarily provide you any enhancements uh, over your LAM mobile radio network. And so, um, you know, you're, you're really mixing two technologies. Narrowband technologies is what public safety relies on for their day-to-day -day mission critical communications. And they are first and foremost, the primary tool for public safety. Now, of course, there's, you know, there are a number of, 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 of public safety responders uh, on this meeting who could speak you know directly to that need but I, i'm i'm repeating to you what was was mentioned to us by them and in other communities and this so we did it we started out with a first band project in the state of, of north dakota and and we had we had dozens and dozens of outreach meetings and their first prime their primary comment was we'd love to have broadband technologies to support public safety communications however our radio networks don't work and, and as part of their saying that, they, we, you know, the state put together a program where they, they're now building and deploying a statewide radio network that all of every member of the state will use. Now, they, of course, they have a pile of money there, so they, they have an advantage over your community and many others in the country. But to go back to your, your you know, your, your comment, and, and I, I, you know, I've heard Steve, uh, and let, I'm, at, at the city council meeting, Steve, Made a, a passionate um, a statement of, of you know what would I, what would be ideal in an ideal environment if there was a tremendous budget available to you um, you would go the broadband to support uh, data communications and to use it for mission critical push to talk if and when needed if there were service so um, yes but to 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 add mission critical data to your day to day response is going to require a major investments in mobile data terminals and applications and, and processes to use them, um, video cameras and, and a variety of other tools that would certainly bring you into, you know, a more modern uh, state of, of public safety communications. However, it's very difficult for, for me to, 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 you know, you know, to advise you to go in that direction when we don't have funds, three million, three to $4 million to upgrade our radio networks. Uh, we didn't put a, a budget together for what it would take to, you know, to add in, um, you know, get mobile data terminals and, and all of the attributes required because you have to integrate them into the IT environment. You got an IT. Uh, there's a lot of work that has to be done. Our part of our work wasn't to identify that scope, but it's a pretty sizable budget that would likely be pretty equal to or, or in excess of what we need for the radio network. 
So I agree with it. All that makes sense to me, Rick. Thank you. Can I just interrupt really quickly? I'm sorry. I, the, the only reason I ask, number one, I want to address Stephen's concerns because I think they're legitimate concerns. And I think mm -hmm. you've just uh, validated all of those concerns in terms of perfect world. I, I guess one of the things that is repeatedly coming up is that broadband is where the money is. And so like, I think there's a real question as to whether we're going to get any money just uh, mm -hmm. by doing an RFP proposal for LMR. Uh, and I don't know. And I'm, when I say money, I mean from the state, from the feds, from whomever, which mm -hmm. I guess is just, um, I... I guess I would just want to shoot for as much money as possible. But um, I mean, this is something we should discuss with the board, obviously, but I would, that's just my concern that I would put out there. Uh, understood. I, I mean, to, to add in, you know, what, what additional elements to add into that, we, you, we'd have to, you know, we, we, I, I think it'd be pretty easy to put it together. You know, I mean, we would have to mobile data terminals, services, applications. I mean, I, you have to understand how it'd be integrated into the IT environment and what IT environment would do it. Would it be, you know, it, could it, 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 there's a lot of, uh, I mean, I could, have a, I could have a discussion with you uh, offline to give you a, a greater background into it. It's certainly being done. I mean, we put together an integration plan for the state of Minnesota that included um, a, a mission critical push to talk um, as well as data applications. I mean, we, we did work for 14 states and territories as part of our first net. And, and there's a lot of knowledge that we learned directly from public safety and that we track day to day um, about it. It isn't about just the service. I mean, obviously coverage is an issue and you, you know, coverage is king and you, you don't have good enough coverage now and more towers are being put in by FirstNet, AT&T, as well as the governor's initiative to, you know, to fund 100 towers, which is, uh, you know, a, a very novel approach. And I think you, as public safety, could get access to those towers if they were available in your community, and they had broadband connectivity to them, um, you know, fiber optic connectivity. Part of our report did talk to CB Fiber. Um, and, and, and certainly they have fiber, but they can only put fiber in unserved and underserved communities. The federal grants have restrictions on where the dollars for um, the, 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 the broadband uh, connectivity can be established. So, I mean, it, there's a lot going on there. It's all, it will be ideal if, if you could concurrently pursue both, but I, you know, that was not what we were asked to do, nor was it what, the, your your stakeholder community um, asked and for during the over the course of of our study. Thank you. That was a point I just wanted to make sure was clear that we talked a lot about this, spent a lot of time on how much do we did in our report for our needs assessment on broadband or cellular, and the stakeholders were very very clear, and their need was so incredible, and the coverage is so bad in the region wide that we put all our focus on the radios. So to me at this point, you could get money, but you'd be a long time to be able to ever use it. Uh, it um, okay, anyone who hasn't asked a question, who wants to ask a question, uh, Jim. Rick. <clears throat> yes, sir. Going back to what Justin was saying, I, you know, I keep hearing what Stephen says, and I keep thinking maybe we've got a head now, saying maybe that is the future. Um, but I have some operational issues that I'm just not comfortable going that direction yet. But in, in, if you had a clean slate and you were coming into Vermont and there was nothing here, t tell me what your public safety communication system would look like. Well, uh, Jim, yeah, it's a, a really important question, but uh, we never, uh, we would not attempt to uh, offer you a suggestion without basing it on the requirements of the end users. I mean, you... You and and and, and you're, 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 you know you know Rick you know what the end users requirements would be in any public safety system they they need to be able to talk on a radio and get instant response and have multiple people hear it simultaneously in an operation that's mission critical that's life safety um, it it's an instant instantaneous communication need so take it absolutely. Take it. Okay, so you, you have to have a reliable, robust, uh, land mobile radio network, and I would anchor it if, if you know, if funding wasn't objective or if radio spectrum wasn't, you know, a barrier, um, you, you know, what we proposed, uh, I, I wouldn't even, you know, I, I'm not even fond of the VHF band. I mean, it's not, it doesn't serve you well in building 
Um, but it is, you know, and it also is very difficult to even coordinate frequencies with Canada and elsewhere. The, the, the signal is, you know, VHF was designed for mobile communications, but, you know, we'd have to change out every radio and, and, and it'd be a much bigger uh, price tag to pursue anything about other than the VHF that you're in. But you have to anchor anything you do on a robust slam mobile radio network and, and all the support services you need at the dispatch center your radio consoles uh, and otherwise. But, you know, you really have to start there. Um, and then, you know, then we would say, okay, what about on your data communications platforms? What, what you know, robust data platform do you need? Once you have anchored a, a very robust Lamb mobile radio network that, that does all the things that you've mentioned and, and that were articulated in the report, then we should, then we would focus on data communications. And, and that really, is not just a push to talk application that, that you know, would supplement um, the land mobile radio. Data networks are, are, are to be complementary to land mobile radio. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of um, uh, mis misrepresentation, misunderstanding out there, particularly at an executive level in government where, you know, FirstNet is gonna replace our land mobile radio networks. Maybe, but you know, there's a whole lot that would have to happen. There is no direct communications, no radio to radio communications. Um, that are that is fire ground communications that fire departments rely on how they do, do their response. That's not possible with push to talk. Um, there are some real benefits of having you know a capability to use you know a broadband network that is reliable and it does provide you coverage. But I would I would have that as supplementary and complementary to the LAM mobile radio network. So that's something that could conceivably be added at a future point after we get the LAN mobile LMR system up to par. Yes, sir. Uh, unless you had a, you know, a, you know, a two uh, multiple, two multiple truckloads of money and we would do them simultaneously and be a bunch right. more. There's, there's, there's nothing that prevents a future addition of fiber and, and data transmission um, after the LMR stuff has, has been uh, upgraded. No, sir. And, and and for backhaul, you know, if we could get access to fiber to use as backhaul from our radio networks, I mean, it's a, it's an overkill because you only need, you only have a few channels at each site. You really only need radio circuits or microwave backhaul, which is at lower cost. But if we have the opportunity, and we did mention that in our report, that, that, you know, CV fiber was bringing fiber toward in and around some of your radio towers proposed already operational or in your radio network, you know, they, if they would bring it to us at no cost to us, sure, we would leverage that. Um, that would be very beneficial. Um, so for backhaul, uh, and, and in fact, in the, in, in the current Project 25 standard, um, the vendors re require a, a, a robust IP backhaul network. The conventional simulcast network that you're proposing doesn't require a fiber optic connectivity or, or an IP circuitry um, to support your communications. Just to summarize what you just said, so I understand it. So if you came up here in a clean slate with a bucket load of money, you would still put in the LMR system and then supplement that with um, the data and, and uh, yeah, cell yeah. service. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, it's first and foremost what you know what your public safety folks have participated in in our in our information gathering said, and and as you know you know and others on this call very well know that that radio network is being held together uh, by you know by uh, wire and 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 and, and tape and uh, it doesn't it doesn't meet the end users' needs. So because you know you 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 have to know you have to affiliate with a tower. In a, in a trunk system, in a simulcasted system, you know, the, the network chooses the robust tower for you and, and you don't, you affiliate with the, with the best serving tower, even if it means you're talking through two towers, so you're talking through all the towers to get your communication. So you don't have to affiliate with the wrong tower and then move a hundred yards and need to be on another tower, but you're not on that tower. So Yes, I mean, what was what what was being proposed pro, uh, initially, and what was proposed in the report is is a more robust network architecture that is needed today. People's lives are at risk every day on that radio network, in my professional opinion. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
I muted myself. Uh, Will, was that a hand? Would you like to ask a question? I just want to make sure everybody gets one chance before I go back around. Do you want to ask a question, Will? Yeah, I'm muting ourselves. No, no, I'm all set right now. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, Stephen, you had a question, and then we'll go back to Kim. Uh, Stephen? Did you have a question? Even if you're on mute, all you have to do is push mm -hmm. uh, six and then I'll unmute you. Yeah, I didn't unmute him. I mean, mute him. So. Yeah, I, I didn't mute myself that way. So I used a phone mute. Um, so I, I asked Rick if there's, that there's nothing in the emails, Donna, that you sent that indicate anybody asked for this proposal. And I'm wondering, does is Rick know that the policy adopted by this board requires anything above twenty thousand to go out to an RFP? And who solicited this proposal? And were other people given an opportunity to bid on it? Okay, that's a procedural question. So I'd just like to hold it um, as far as technical stuff, stuff, technical items that relate okay, well, specifically to the proposal. You know, I, I see your I'm point, done. Stephen, but it is I just I feel it's a procedural board question and not a Rick question. Okay, well, I'll ask Rick uh, a technical question then. Rick, Thank when you. you talk about this, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Okay, can, you're talking about data, you're talking about LTE data, correct? Something like FirstNet or Verizon, right? Yes, 4G LTE, 3G LTE, 5G, yes, yes I am. Okay. So, so in effect, that isn't it fair to say that many of these folks' uh, understandings uh, of how available this stuff is using small cells and and infill uh, might be discouraging them from asking for uh, fire ground video, uh, automatic vehicle location, mobile data terminals because they think it's out of reach. Whereas it's really not out of reach in in this context of this hundreds of millions and 51 million for new cell towers, if we're, there's not going to ever be a better time than now where the money's available to approach in a unified system. Isn't that correct? Uh, I no, I don't. I don't agree with that statement, sir. I, 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 I mean. You, I don't know how well you know the uh, the grant background, the funding grant background on the on the broadband money that's going to the states. That money is being allocated to support unserved and underserved communities. So, yes, uh, there may be some some unserved and underserved communities in in central Vermont, um, but uh, I can't speak to that because we haven't studied it. So I don't have direct insight into that into what you're saying. However, I, I will agree with you that that your first responders would love to have reliable of uh, uh, cellular coverage, and so would your citizens, of course. Uh, and I'm sure they would love to have that. And they would they would uh, uh, certainly their their the, their mission critical work would be better served if they had access to uh, broadband data, reliable data, and and they had applications and and tools to support them if they had video cameras. And they had applications, and they had a working process, and there were extra people to support that use of that technology. Because it isn't just about the money; you also have to have the people. You have to expand your IT departments. You have to build in applications. You have to train and you know train people. Um, yeah, yeah, there's a, a grand opportunity. But these current grants, um, uh, uh, particularly the the ARP, well, the ARPA money could be used for a variety of different purposes, but. I don't know if your community has ARPA money. That's the uh, the uh, American Relief and Rescue Plan money, and how they're using it. That could be allocated to broadband or other purposes. The governor has clearly made a decision that they're using some of their ARPA money. I would suspect um, to support broadband, but the Infrastructure Act money and some other money that comes to broadband don't uh, wouldn't be applicable for public safety. Um, it's for community broadband. Now that doesn't mean that governments couldn't benefit, you know, from applications like that, like that. But but yes, your, your public safety would love to have additional tools to support their day to day mission. They they would love that. But they've got to have a robust landmobile radio network because 
that's what they know and that's what they rely on and that's what they trust. Um, and, and so you've got to have that. Could you do them together? Sure. But like I said earlier, it's going to take a, a great deal more time, effort and money. And, and, and that's also going to require more support from your local community to, to integrate. All right. But if we're going to use, if we can access the broadband money, we can use that for towers, for generators, for fiber backhaul, and then the the cost for the LMR system goes down dramatically, doesn't it? You know, I, I first of all, I, I don't know the grant well enough to say that everything that you've just mentioned is achievable. The, 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 those who have the funds have flexibility. So they were able to use ARPA funds um, to support initiatives that they weren't able to complete because of, of COVID and its impact on local uh, government revenue. So theoretically, what you're saying could be done um, at a local level and or the state level. So um, that's, that's, that's possible. So yes, it has more leverage in terms of of of, of laying a fiber optic optic cable that could be used to connect your towers i i said earlier that that that's uh, it is a possibility um the rest of what you said uh building clearly the governor uh, the, the there's certain money that you're not allowed to build towers on because the the goal of the broadband initiatives is for a hundred by a hundred of symmetrical megabits uplink and downlink. Wireless networks can't achieve those data rates. So you know um, there there are you know so part of what you're saying is achievable if those who manage the funds are willing to take their their portion of their grants and apply it to it. The, the other broadband dollars are not directly applicable, uh, but could be indirectly applicable to what you're saying. Okay, uh, uh, anyone else? Okay, Kim, you can use your, your turn for second, your second term. Well, excuse me, uh, Stephen's got a, oh, he's muted. Okay, thank you. Nobody ahead, disputes Kim. that what we need is an LMR system. The only issue is how can we get the money to do it? And the only way I know to get the money that I've heard of any discussion is to combine it in some way with the broadband world to reduce the amount of money we need to expend because for the radio system, because it seems to me from all I've heard, the radio money is coming from local effort, not from grants. And my question to you, Rick, is if you put your mind to this and thought about it a little bit, could you help draft a proposal that would say, in essence, that some of the advantages of money spent on broadband could also be used to augment the ability of getting LMR radio systems and reduce the cost for the community benefit. And I think from the grant things that I've read, which I've got to say is pretty sketchy at the moment, um, there, are, there are some funds to increase, to pay for fire stations, et cetera. But nobody wants to pay for radios. And I don't think what you've proposed is going to help us at all, because all it's going to do is say there's a big bill that nobody wants to pay. What we need to do is to tap in to grant money that are available in a creative workout for if, if you're hired creative workout to combine these things so that we can at least go to a grant writer and say, okay, here's, here's the plan. Join with us. That's what I'm looking for. What? I think I, you're, I, go ahead, Don, I'm sorry. No, well, I just want to say that from the standpoint of what we heard very clearly 
on January 20th from Bill Frazier and what we've heard from somewhat from Barry City is that they would be a they have connections of relationships both state and federal that indeed they felt having an RFP as we talked about sort of ready to go although it would need further modifications before it was actually used but would provide <clears throat> their approach to the state and federal contacts, more information, make it more tangible, you know, really show that we're serious and we know what we're talking about. And hence, I asked for this proposal so you could see it, you can decide you don't wanna deal with it, but people keep saying, what is it gonna cost? But very clearly, Bill Fraser felt that Montpelier and particularly Capital Far would welcome this RFP. Uh, I don't know if Will or Sally wants to chime in on that, but that was the very clear direction that I heard on the 20th. Uh, Will, Sally, uh, Capital Far, uh, do you feel this RFP would be uh, useful? Well, I think the people you mentioned ought to identify their funding sources because so far, I haven't found Excuse me, one. Kim. Excuse me. You're out of order. Just a minute. I, I wanted to give Capital Far an, uh, a chance to talk. Um, if you don't good. have anything to say related to this, that's fine. Although I prefer you, you, you sort of update us. So <clears throat> as I understand it, Capital Fire is putting together a special meeting on uh, February 23rd to uh, to talk about um, the situation with with all of this stuff, and that's all I know. I don't know any particulars and any details for it, so that's what I was notified of today. Uh, so they they're going to hold a special meeting on the 23rd uh, for the Capital Fire Mutual Aid to talk about um, uh, this program and the dispatching and and where we go forward with it. Okay. Uh, Don, if I may, I could give a brief uh, response yes. to uh, Kim. Go right ahead. Okay. So, Kim, I, I fully appreciate what, what, what you and, and others in this meeting are, are, are hoping to achieve. Um, I, I, I don't know of a, of a, of a grant uh, program directly that would achieve that objective, with the exception of what I said on ARPA funds, that have gone to the state or have gone to local communities. You have more flexibility in, in, uh, in applying those ARPA funds um, to initiatives that uh, were on, could not be pursued because of lack of local funding. So I, 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 I mean, the state is clearly has taken some money and has said that they're going to build. They want to build. They're going to build 100 radio towers. So, and they those towers are to support. Uh, broadband communications and so I, I don't know enough about the details whether or not those towers also include um, fiber optic connectivity because the cellular carriers are not going to be interested in any towers where there aren't broadband connectivity or where they're given a right of way to bring uh, fiber optic connectivity to the tower so you, you can't you right now as I mentioned earlier you the 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 radio network serving your communities can um, can rely on on tele telephony circuitry or microwave backhaul. Um, the towers that the cellular carriers need need fiber optic need fiber optic cabling. So because it's a lot of data and it's got to be transmitted back and forth. So if the if the governor's initiative is to you know identify and, and, and build 100 towers and bring fiber to them, well that's that's a huge investment because. You know the, the laying of fiber is, is you know, could be significant. You know it's not it isn't about the glass. The fiber cable itself is is relatively inexpensive compared to the construction uh, of, of the fiber and, and and all that right away. So I don't know what the governor is doing, but your your best chance for pursuing this is to talk to those you know local entities with the ARPA dollars and to the state about it. You know are they willing to support you in one way? The federal government is not there's not written the grants that prevent you from doing it, but they haven't they haven't clearly given you access to broadband dollars 
that would allow you to, to fund your radio network. You could potentially, as CB Fiber is already doing, and as we have indicated in our report, that they're bringing fiber by some of your towers and you should, we indicate that you should consult with them to see if they'll bring fiber to your towers. That's a small percentage uh, of the cost. In fact, there was no money allocated in the priority one, two or three for bringing fiber because it wasn't required for what you're doing. So if the, if the governor's towers might support you, great. Um, uh, but you know, we identified uh, uh, towers and, and locations, buildings that could be used for the radio network. Um, and, and so there is, a design, there is a preliminary design. Uh, 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 it's beyond a budgetary design. It's a, it's a design that would work. We work very closely uh, with, uh, with uh, Joe Aldsworth uh, you know, to visit sites and to select it. And then did, you know, we ran propagation studies on all of it to confirm that 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 constellation of sites would would support you know your region network. So you know uh, I, the the thing is is that uh, you your your entity and you were discussing this in your in the meeting with the the the, the council the Montpelier council is who would be the right entity to a, you know, to approach the funders you know and and that's not Televay. Televay was asked to provide. A, 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 you know, a, a, a RFP document that you could say, we're ready, we've got a plan. Um, and, and so, yes, I'll be happy. And I'm spending my time, you know, con, you know con, I, I, I want to see the best outcome for all of you. I, I like I said, I, I am uh, living in Virginia and my heart's in, in central Vermont right now. You know, we've spent a lot of time. We want to see you succeed. And, and, and whatever creative ways that we can offer to you, I'll, I'll find them. I've, I'm telling you what I'm hearing around the country, what people are doing. Uh, I, I can only share those experiences with you. Someone from your entity has got to take the lead in having these conversations. Um, and, and, and that's the, you know, that's the best advice I could give you. Will the, you know, could we add some additional information into the RFP that would help you? Absolutely. What, we, what, why not, you know, but I'll, I'm not sure what that is directly yet. Okay, I just want to add just a little bit about from the city council perspective on the ARPA money that we were told, especially the first, um, the first wave of it, we could only use it for things that we actually had approved and held back from doing. So we literally had to replace, you know, our money for a project we had on the books, ready to go. We voted on, we did the bond on whatever, but we had to stop it because of finances. So then the second way was a little more open, but we still had so many needs. Uh, and stormwater was one of the ones that lots of things qualified for. So there's still more restrictions than I think maybe the general public understands with that dollar. That doesn't mean you can't ask for it, but it's not as simple as maybe I felt was expressed. Well, Donna. Uh, yes, Kim, your hand's been up, so I didn't see it go down. I'm sorry. I didn't. Well, Another question? It seems to me we're chasing our tail because fundamentally this is a governance issue. Because if we don't have a single entity that can speak for the region. And with your help, Rick, and other experts, and get as much funding as we can for that entity to reduce our overall cost, we're not going to get an LMR system. Because from what I've heard, very few people in in the uh, well, Stephen, West. excuse me, Stephen, you need to mute again. We're getting back sounds. Thank. You. I mean, that, that's a discussion for later on this evening. Is we can think of some way to work together on this because I'm convinced that the only way we're going to get any grant money at all is to come at it with one entity. And we can jiggle the entity. It doesn't have to be the one we have now. We can we can work on that, but we need to come up with one that'll work. Well, and the we one that's nearest, uh, Kim, to to stepping up 
and being regional is the combination of Montpelier with Capital Fire. They have all those towns involved and Montpelier has both the bonding financial capacity to do that as well as the relationships with state and federal. So hence- Donna, you know as well as I do, the city of Montpelier is never gonna pay for a bond to buy a radio system for the towns. It's just not gonna happen. Well, all I know is they're willing to take the lead and are talking to state and federal people and they, they are some of the people I heard wanting this RFP. But if that's not true and the board doesn't support it, that's fine. Well, Fraser has told me personally that no way Montpelier is going to bond to build a radio system for the towns. Well, that, that's it. not so flat as uh, that's not how I hear it. But, well, you know, you all were there changed, on the 20th, but... on January 20th, when Bill felt this is what he, Montpelier, public safety and Capital Fire needed was more specifics, really shovel ready, serious RFP information. Well, before we but spend any money Kim, on an RFP, Kim, let's find out what's, what's the background. Okay. Anyone else, if there's a interest in pursuing this, I think we ought to be honest and upright that Rick's put time in this. And I appreciate that because you wanted to get an idea of the scope of cost and time it would take to do this. And if there's a will of the board to advance this, whether it's to take it to the next meeting and have further consideration of it. I'm sorry, Kim, you didn't get it. I sent it out Tuesday as soon as I got it from Rick. Uh, I'll go back over it and resend it to you. Um, but I sent it to the whole board. But this is what this discussion is about. What do you want to do? Do you want to? put it on the agenda for next month? Do you want to drop it? What's the pleasure? Uh, Donna, can I clarify something that y'all just talked about? Steve very Whitford? briefly, Stephen, very briefly, please. Yeah. Okay, so I, I just have some details from sitting through the legislative hearings on that tower proposal. Each tower would be, they would be large macro towers and several would be located in this area and they would be free radio hosting for public safety purposes and two LTE carriers, minimum of two LTE carriers on each tower. Each tower would be served with fiber and generators, et cetera. So these would be state subsidized towers that would be the complication of using them for central Vermont LMR system is that it would require uh, modifying the license transmit sites. And that's time consuming. So the ARPA money, the 150 million that's already been appropriated is ARPA money for infrastructure. And that's controlled by the Vermont Community Broadband Board and can be directed towards our towers. And the additional 100 million that's being appropriated in infrastructure can be used for both middle mile and uh, towers. So there's plenty of infrastructure out there that can lower the cost of an LMR system. We just have a net need to have an integrated plan. Thank you. Thank you. And if you, you mute again, it would really help. Okay, board, uh, Justin, I just saw your, your hand, sorry. So I just wanted to comment on what you just solicited um, comments on. I think this is just incredibly promising and this is wonderful. And I think it's a really big step forward. Uh, I, yeah, I share Stephen's concerns about the RFP and sending the RFP out. And like, I don't know what the process is. So I, you know, I don't want to talk out of my ass here. Um, but if there were concerns there, I think we should walk through them at some point in the future, probably at a future meeting. But I think this is really, really promising. This is what we need to do. The, the only way forward is to do something like this, as far as I can tell. And it's a matter of just chopping it up and trying to figure out uh, exactly what we wanted to say. So that's my opinion. I, I would definitely not table this. I think this is really good and we should keep discussing it. I think it's awesome work. You want to make a motion? I want to let everyone else talk first, and then I guess we can. I can well, make sometimes a if you have a motion, people know what they like and don't like. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'll let Jim do that. He knows a lot more about procedure than me. <laughs> yeah, not really. Um, I just wanted to clarify what Stephen just said. So there is a plan afoot from the state to fund um, cell towers that we might have 
use of those towers as part of our plan? Is that, did I interpret, hear that correctly? Yes, exactly. Specifically identified is the right of public safety to be hosted on each of the 100 new towers. All right. Now, the tower locations, have they been identified yet? Well, they're doing the... They're doing the survey. Uh, begin, there's an RFP out, which Televate will probably win, to do the drive testing to find all the dead zones, and then they will uh, create search radiuses uh, for those towers. And then the siting, I mean, siting a new tower is a process. So are you talking about dead zone of cell phone or, or land mobile radio? Dead zones of cell phones is all they're measuring. It would be need, smart for us to get in and measure the land mobile radio dead zones and and affect those siting processes. They could just ask me where the dead zones are on the cell phone. I don't know where they all are. <laughs> um, so my, I, I guess my point is, is that does Rick know about where these towers are going to go? And I mean, the plans might be great in, in concept, but if the towers are, are five miles away from where we need them, it doesn't help. Is, aren't, there, aren't, our, isn't our, aren't our eight towers very site-specific or location-specific to a master plan? Um, I'll, I'll, let me give you answer that question uh, after I answer other questions. But I, I, there's a, yes, I mean, there, there are some really positive opportunities here that I, I wouldn't turn our back on. However, you know, the reality is, is that these still are three, three or more years away. I, I mean, let's, let's be honest with you. They, they, they're going to get an RFP out. I, 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 I share uh, 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 Mr. Whitaker's uh, optimism. Uh, I'd love to be able to say that we're going to win. We, we will we'll compete with others, and the, the state will choose the most competent vendor to support the initiative. And I'm sure I, I would hope it's us. We'll do a great job of it. But however, um, you know, I mean, how long does it take to build a tower? Uh, you know, first we got to get an RFP out to do the study, and then to and then to do the assessment of the coverage zones, and then you know that then there's a whole procurement to to you know to for the tower vendors, for the fiber players, and then and then you know there's going to be board hearings, zoning hearings. It's going to you know towers building anywhere are long elongated, and in Vermont. You know, it's going to be even longer. So you could be waiting three to five years before you have one tower. We've already identified the, all the towers uh, that that would support the initiative to to provide robust coverage within that. And 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 there, you know, there's been direct conversations. Some of them are already there, and others there's been conversations ongoing to, to get access to them. So that would, you know, that would be we would have to do that on the additional towers that we were going to put up anyway, would we not? All well, the information. Yes, I mean, I, I we couldn't. You wouldn't want to put it in, in the RFP the way that we're considering it. We actually know the locations um, of of the towers. We visited the locations. The only thing we weren't able to do is validate whether or not those towers and and, and all the shelters have sufficient uh, room for equipment, and if the towers will handle additional cable and, and antennas. That that's done by an uh, and it has to be done by a, a firm that's qualified to do that work. So, but that that work would be done in conjunction with you know with the the RFP. Uh, however, I mean yes, I, 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 we should get in line and we should we should pursue this. But if you wait, if you wait till this happens, you're just putting your yourself in further jeopardy. And I, I don't disagree with Kim's point that we don't have funding. I, I that's your biggest dilemma. You know, if, if most programs that do this, they, they either have a pile of money like the state of North Dakota, they, they self-fund it. They don't even ask the locals for the money. The state is building it out. There are statewide networks in Michigan and Minnesota and Ohio and Washington and many. You don't have a state network. You're on your own there. You have to do it yourself. So um, if you wait, you're going to wait. I mean, it's not happening any day. You could go in parallel. Um, and, and uh, uh, you know, my, my opinion would be that we should pursue these in parallel um, and, and hope for, uh, hope for the, that the, 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 the work that the state is doing gets fast-tracked and benefits us. But until we know the location of the towers, we, we can't even assume that they would meet our, require, our coverage requirements. I was just hoping to identify a savings 
somewhere in our plant, but maybe it would take too long and maybe they're not happy. We should just get an oil uh, well like they have in North Dakota. <laughs> well, you actually have gold up there. It's white. It's white. It's snow. And, <laughs> and you know, uh, what a lot of communities did, in fact, we put the, the initial funding plan together before the state stepped up for, um, for the state of North Dakota. They had the lowest uh, cigarette tax. They had the lowest. Uh, uh, the, you could you could get. In fact, people told us they'd get a speeding ticket and only pay fifteen dollars, and that was cheaper to get a speeding ticket multiple times um, and, and no points and no uh, no reference to your insurance than it was to be late for work. So, you know, they, they, we gave them plans that they could raise money, including bonds. But the state said, we got money, we'll step up. Others, you know, we give them funding plans. I mean, uh, right now, uh, Yakima County, which is adjacent to King County, uh, is getting approval from its citizens to add um, a fund, you know, add a, a quarter or half a percent to local uh, local taxes. A lot of communities do that. The state of uh, uh, Indiana uh, puts ten dollar fee on its licensing. Um, you know, others put you know surcharges on visitors. I mean, I, I get it. It's never easy for a legislator to want to put tax on anyone uh, to raise funds. So uh, it's there's a double edged sword here, but. You need to figure out how to fund this. And so I, I think we need to, you know, not, we need to take all options. No, no options should be taken off the table. Thank My you. Opinion. I have some hands up, uh, Doug Hoyt and then Doug Brent. Madam Chair, there's uh, extreme feedback from that phone caller that it's really well, making uh, it hard. Yeah, they went, they went mute, so it did go away. Uh, I heard in previous discussion uh, that uh, public safety was going to be part of this tower tower thing. If that information came from people that are in the state, I need to know if they're talking about the Department of Public Safety or if they're talking about the other people that are doing the hard work, municipal, county, and other uh, local public safety officials. Madam Chair, that can I respond to that? Yes, you may. Yes, that's that's local public safety regional dispatch systems is what is trying to be supported with that provision of the tower contract. But, and I'll add, there's one other proposal being floated. There's real pushback from key legislators to not give these towers away to private corporations. And another idea that's being floated is to give these towers away to as a cap to regional public safety organizations because it would give them a long-term revenue stream from the cell rent that could support the replacement of the land mobile radio system. So that's in percolation. Okay, thank you. Uh, anything else, Doug Hoyt? No. Okay, uh, put your hand down. I get confused otherwise. Uh, Doug Brent? Can you hear me, Donna? Yes, yes. Yes. Thank you very much. I just wanted to say, and I'm always the one that says it, but I'm saying it in regard to what Rick has said several times tonight. Firefighter safety is hanging in the balance as the clock ticks away. That's what I all I wanted to say. No. Excellent point. And that's why, to me, time is of the essence. If we could work on this RFP and have it there and have it ready and then keep poking with Montpelier Capital Fire poking, maybe Barry poking. Then we, we, have hired, a we hired a company to tell us what was wrong with the system and they've told us what's wrong with the system. And I think that puts everybody's liability, shifts everybody's liability in case something does happen down the line, because we've been made appropriately aware of what's wrong with the system. And I just think we just keep kicking this can down the road. And at some point, it's going to catch up with us. Yes. Anything else, Doug? Nope, I just got to figure out how to take my hand down. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> All 
All right, Justin's still not willing to make a motion. So we're just gonna carry this discussion over to next meeting, what? I'm gonna make a motion. I would okay. move to, um, well, I guess I would move to adopt the proposal or at least to, I mean, you know, I guess what's the what's the process here? Do we sign a contract with the, uh, with Televate? I, I don't actually think that, especially given Kim's concerns, I don't think that we can vote to, um, I don't think that we can vote to adopt Televate's proposed RFP here, because I don't think people have had enough time to review it. So I, I would vote to put, I would move to put this on the next meeting's agenda with the understanding that we will be voting on whether to move forward with it. It's what my motion would be. Okay. So That's that everyone can be prepared and know like yes. th there's gonna be a live vote. And you can we can find out if there's interest to pursue it. Is there yeah. a second to that motion? I'll second. Doug seconded. Uh, Jim Ward. Yes. I'm a little, I'm a little confused on the um, financial component of this. Have we already spent the money on the proposal or are they proposing a proposal that we're going, we may or may not buy? Do we owe them any money? They wrote up a proposal, gave us an estimated cost, or gave us actually, they gave us an exact cost instead of in the past, they gave me some broad cost ranges. So that if we chose, we could accept their proposal, award them a contract for the close to $30,000 work, and then it starts. And then both- uh, Is that the RFP or is the RFP- their proposal is to do an RFP. Okay, so the proposal the they have right now is not an RFP. No, it's no, it's a proposal to do an RFP. But at this point, we owe them no money. We owe them no money. Bless Rick's heart. We owe them no money. Beautiful. I mean, he, is, he has gone the extra mile and many more. Um, I would love to help you find the money. I mean, I, I will give you, a, I will continue to share everything that I'm finding from the community about this. And I'm sure others on the, on the board and the public will do elsewhere but you know right people's and, and lives we, are at risk every day right. and we would assign uh hopefully about board members to work with montpelier capital west to work with this contract so that we don't spend Medicare. any money on any immediate staff like we did with the study that they did for us previously we paid paco separately and we could do this with what we have as a balance. We've been holding out $30,000 that we could do. And then it's not dependent on the ballot. But that doesn't mean, again, if we wait till March, then we'll know whether we have the additional 30000 So maybe that would make the board more comfortable. The feedback is just overwhelming. Yes, yeah. it is. Uh, Stephen, I'm sorry. You're going to have to mute yourself. It really helps if everybody mutes no, yourself. I need to speak. This is the time when the policy requiring a RFP for anything over 20000 has to be addressed. Uh, you, cannot, uh, you cannot award a $30,000 contract with no RFP. Uh, excuse me, uh, Stephen. We're not awarding it right now. We're putting it on our agenda for discussion in March. But we are going to come back to that point after this motion. Please mute yourself, Stephen. Uh, Doug Hoyt, were you waving or are you just holding your head? Yeah, um, yeah. can we get some extra money to get him to mute his phone? He, he's he's muted now. And just something yeah. we all have to be mindful is to mute when you're not the, talking. It's in the interim. He's the only one. Okay, so we have a motion. Any further discussion by the board members? Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Take your hand. Aye. All opposed say nay. Okay, don't need a roll call. Thank you. Now, uh, back to Stephen's point, which also uh, I did email the board that you have a decision within our financial policy. Anything over $20,000 you would normally put out to bid. We did have a contract with Televate. This study is, this RFP is using that information. The board could decide to vote and do this sole source and not put it out to bid. And it's all a matter of time. 
as well as expertise and relationship we have with Televate and Rick. What's the threshold, 25,000? 20,000 is what's in our policy. Anything over 20,000 should be bid. And, and we do, I mean, we bid the original study out and it was, the response came back. We had so underestimated how big of a project we were asking that we reduced the first phase to just needs assessment, knowing that we would need to do at least one or two more phases. And this is one of those phases is the RFP for equipment that is defined within the first study. So, I mean, again, it, it happens a lot, city council, other places where you have a, a contract with someone, they've done some work, you wanna extend it, or you can say you don't wanna do that and you wanna put it out to bid. Now, Justin, is that a yawn or do you wanna talk? So we can make that decision tonight. We can make it next month. What's your pleasure? Uh, Kim, and then Justin. Kim, you muted. About a preparation of next month's meeting, I wish you would ask the people that you mentioned who say they have plans for funding this to let you know what they are so we'd all know what they are. And I think this discussion of the uh, the uh, I think that's unlikely be because when until next I, month. I think that's unlikely for them to name their sources because they're talking to people. It's like, you know, when you're trying to uh, bid on a house, you don't put it out there in public. So they're talking to agents within the state and the feds. I can ask, but I, I doubt that they'll tell me. Well, I hope you'll keep us all in the loop as to what's going on because we need that information to make a good decision. Okay, what we're talking about now is our own financial policy whether or not we want to allow a sole source for something over $20,000. Do you have any I comments agree. on that? Yeah, I think we should defer that till next month. Okay, uh, Justin. I agree, I think we defer so we have time to ruminate. Okay. What did he say? He, he said we should defer the discussion about the policy of sole, source, sole sourcing or not to next month. I just Everybody think everyone should have time. some time to sit with it. No, the... They just couldn't hear you, uh, Justin. That's the only reason yeah. I tried to restate it. Yeah. So was that clear? Or did you understand? Yeah, I understood. Yeah, he was just, he's kind of garbled in the speaker. But um, the, the only question I have in that is, so we have the sole authority to waive the... Um, yes. So we can go to the 30,000 yes. just on our own volition. Okay. Yep. What's going to change? Rick? Uh, Your hands up. I don't know. Yeah. Let me uh, take my Steven, hand Stephen, mute yourself, please. Stephen, you got us. You got us. Stop unmuting yourself. I'm, I've got the policy right in front of me. and it, Stephen, you can only... Stephen, I'm sorry. Somebody else has the floor, but your, your oh, back noise, we're asking you to mute. Oh, I'm sorry. Please mute. Okay. Uh, Rick? Yes, uh, yes ma'am. Um, I, I, out of respect of, of, of the board and yourself and, and all the participants, I, I would like to make two comments. First, I appreciate that you know, folks need time to uh, 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 review, absorb, and digest and have questions. And I'd be happy to answer their questions um, uh, in advance of the next board meeting because you, you really want to keep this moving. Uh, 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 you know, like as, as, as Doug pointed out, another month is still another month that, that where, where something you know, tragic could happen. The other, the other point I wanted to make is that I, I don't think it's, it, it's – uh, it's respectful for me to participate and to be on this call during this conversation on sole sourcing. I, I you know, I, I don't want to create a conflict of interest for anyone. Uh, I, I respect uh, uh, the rule of law and, and, and how you all govern yourself. And so I, I would respectfully uh, uh, ask uh, to uh, 
you know, to be, you know, to leave this meeting so that you have this conversation. Um, and I could come back if you need it, but I, I just don't think that I should participate in this part of the conversation, in my, my humble opinion. You think we should soul source though? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was not aware of uh, until I was recently informed, um, you know, via a scathing email that I'm not going to discuss here, but um, <laughs> I, I, I am. I, I was not aware of, 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 of any of your, 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 you know, procurement regulations. So I, so I don't know, uh, but I know now, and, and I want to, I want to respect a, a, a big conflict of interest that could be perceived by my listening in and smiling or, or commenting or otherwise, you know, uh, so. <laughs> Bye, Rick, you can go. <laughs> All right. well, like Thank I said, you for bringing I, it up. I'm I, sorry, I, I didn't. I, I didn't cognize the conflict, but you're that's right. That's all right. right. I, I, all you. I want to say is that I, I appreciate you know what you all do and and giving us an opportunity to submit uh, a proposal and and I will answer any questions uh, in advance of it. And and yes, uh, you know considerations of fiber under the you know restrictions that we've discussed, um, you know could be incorporated. Um, and that's, you know, so whatever, but it'd be, I think it'd be more beneficial and advantageous to all of us if you could, you know, assemble your questions, get them to Donna uh, in advance, and I'll either, you know, provide you a written response. Uh, I, I, you know, my goal would be to provide a written response to them in, in, in as brief, uh, you know, as concise as possible. All right. Thank so, you. Thank, thank you, you very much for being here. Thank Most you helpful. all very much. Uh, 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 thanks for letting me be part of this this family and good luck to you all and and i'll i'll be here when you need me thank, okay. you. thank you thank you all right uh doug hoyt was your hand a by hand or i want to talk no i was waiting to buy the rick okay so the question i asked i'm sorry the question i asked is what will change what's going to change between now and march What information are we going to get between now and March that would guide us as to whether we're going to? Uh, well, Rick we... said he would answer questions. And, um, Excuse I me, wanna, Kim. I want to, that's what I want to know. You want to know what the questions are? No, I'll formulate the questions. All right, so I guess okay. we're going to wait and see. All right. I, I'm sorry, uh, Brent, I've lost track. Have we voted on this motion to put this on the agenda for March? No, not yet. Okay, all right. Uh, so, Doug, if you wanted, you could do an amendment to this. But if, if, you don't, if you don't mind waiting, then we'll just go with the motion. The only amendment I would make is could I break Stephen's phone? Uh, yes, yeah, Stephen, mute your phone. I'm still waiting to talk. Okay. I'm going to talk if you don't shut that phone off. <laughs> okay, Douglas. <clears throat> he wanted to talk on the motion before we vote on it. All right, Stephen. I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Yes. This is created by not having a physical location. I have a bad phone. Uh, so I'm looking at the policy, and that's the advantage of the month. All of y'all need to read your policy. It, the board can... Excuse the me, board Stephen. Can... Stephen, the yeah. motion that we're discussing is is not about the policy. The it's about, to put something on next month's about agenda. moving this article to next meeting. That's what's on the table to talk about right now, Stephen. Okay, but you, you're the chair. You set the agenda. You don't need a motion to put something on the agenda. We have a motion meeting. made to put this proposal and the financial policy right. on asked, the agenda for change? March, Stephen. I'm going to ask you to be muted again. The motion before us is to put on the agenda both the proposal for the RF work and for discussing our financial policy and whether you want to sole source. 
Everyone in favor, say aye or wave your hand. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Perfect. Thank you. Okay, next is um, Kim asked to be put on the agenda discussion of Capital FAR's MOU. And he sent out some papers to everyone um, discussing this and discussing an MOA. Kim, you want to introduce the topic? Well, I got my best thought as to what the meaning of the contract is between us. And the one thing I know about contracts is if you come up with a idea of what it means, you ask the other side and see whether they agree with you. If they don't, or if they do, then we know what the rules are. So the broader question is, I think it's time to talk with our town uh, CFMAS as to what they want out of this organization. Um, as you know, I don't think they can vote on anything. Uh, and they've been pretty sensitive that they've not been voting on expending the city's funds for their benefit. But from here on out, I think we should invite those folks to come in and have a discussion with us about how they relate to this organization. It may be that we need to dissolve it if it's just the two cities um, and it's every town for itself, which I think would be a terrible mistake, then maybe that's the way to go. But if we're going to build a regional system, we need regional cooperation. And the process is pretty simple. Get together and discuss it. And if you don't like the way the board's constructed, uh, we can reconstruct the board. Uh, everything would be on the table to discuss how to reorganize to be an effective regional corporation. But we can't do any of it if we don't talk about it. And I think it starts with an understanding of what our existing contract is because we can't just stumble along in the dark. We made a deal, we got to know what the deal is. If it's no good, let's change it and make it work for us. That's my view of it. So I think the memo I sent is the best I could do as to meaning of it. I talked with Paco and I talked with uh, Tom Galanka, who are the drafters, and they said, yes, that's essentially what our ideas were. So we need to hear from the other side. If they, if they disagree, we need to know it. If they agree, then let's change it and, and come up with something that's good for all of us. OK, so what's the board's pleasure? Uh, Sally, your hand's up. Yep. Um... So as Will mentioned before, there is a meeting, the special meeting for Capital Fire Mutual Aid on the 23rd. And the sole purpose of that meeting is to discuss Capital Fire's uh, future with CVPSA and what direction we want to take. I just learned of the meeting today as well, so I don't have any other information, but I do know that that is the purpose of the meeting. Yeah, I'd like to be part of that meeting if you could send me an invite. It will be an in-person meeting at Alumni Hall in Barrie at seven o'clock on February 23rd. Uh, okay, Jim, your hand. Yeah, I just had a question for Kim if you're finished with um, Sally, you all set? Okay. Kim, can you articulate what you see as the specific 
rub a bone of contention between the different interpretations or, or are you not, are you only at a point you know there is different interpretations? Well, I don't even know there is this historically. Um, when this came up in December, I thought the agreement required, I'm going to call them the towns for this shorthand, were required to pay to uh, some share to CVPSA. When I went back and uh, Paco told me that was wrong, and I think uh, Joe Aldsworth did also. So I listened to what they said, and I went back and looked at it, and I think they were right. The only thing they had to pay for was discussions about um, dispatching, which we hadn't had any. So as I wrote you, I didn't think they owed us any money. On the other hand, the agreement was pretty clear that the only function of the board members um, was to vote on dispatch issues. And it says pretty clearly that they are not full blown members. And frankly, it makes no sense to have an organization voting that, that has no skin in the game to use a colloquial as to how the cities are going to spend their money. And that's what we spent. Is anyone disputing that? Uh, I will. For four years, they've had full membership, full voting on everything before the board. There was no restriction on their board participation. And you're well, saying that's in compliance and not in compliance with the- I thought it was in compliance, but not, not Kim's, it, it's an opposition of Kim's points. The interpretation for four years has been they were full members. Well, frankly, well, nobody, nobody brought it up because we weren't, once we got into spending money, then it became different. In any event, it's here. It isn't going to go away. And we should get an answer. Um, because otherwise, everything we do is going to be subject to reversal if some dissident doesn't like it. Well, what I'm trying to determine, Kim, is this a disagreement or a different interpretation between you and our board or between our board and Capital Five Mutual Aid? Well, frankly, it's not been given any thought. When I was chair, I didn't give it much thought because there wasn't any need to. And the and need now is? The need now is um, we need to reorganize our relationship. I don't think it's fair to the two cities to have the townspeople sharing and voting how they spend their money and even how this organization is managed because they're not true members. And the only, the broader issue is, can we put together a regional organization that I think could help us fund what we all want to fund? Um, I don't see how CFMAS itself, there's no way in hell that they can issue a bond issue. They don't have any authority to do it, to fund this. So we need to work together and find a vehicle, get grant money, I'll make up some numbers. Hopefully I'm just gonna interrupt you a bit, Kim, because I'd like to get back to your central point, And that is, does the board have interest in this, in pursuing our current MOU, whatever the interpretation, and reorganizing that relationship? No. And if it does, I, does it want to try to do it before Capital FAR has their meeting on the 23rd, was it? Well, or do they want to wait till after that meeting? I think we should invite them to come 
and discuss it. And it's just a conversation. I'm just trying to check out the board's will, Kim. I, I know what yours I, is. I understand that. So would you, you please not interrupt me? Okay. Well, so you I, interrupted I, me, Donna. I did. I said, because you got talking about finances. And I said, I thought you were, you got off topic of whether or yeah. not we we have okay. the board has an interest. I'm only asking the board if they have an interest to pursue it. And great. If they do, we'll take whatever time they yeah. want. But I want to know if the board has this interest. I don't to... think that's the right question. The question is, can we invite them in to discuss it with us? Does the board have the interest in looking at this? And one of the steps might be to invite them in. One of the steps might be we go there. But is the interest there? Jim? You said yourself that keeping the lines of communications open is going to be key in our ability to move forward with anything. And I guess I look at it like I agree if they're not paying the, their nickel, then their, their voting rights perhaps should have been, been limited. It doesn't sound like the past precedence has, has gone along with that. There has been past precedence that they've voted on everything. But to not not to any great detriment, I don't believe. And, and I guess my, my point is that the timing right now, I don't think is is good to address, you know, any subtleties in the agreements, because if someone's being pushed away from the table, only being allowed, you know, a small plate, we want them at the table. That's that I think that's the bottom line. And, and if there's no real detriment to them continuing with what they've done before, um, you know, I, I, I guess I would say to the members, the the capital five mutual aid members, that if there was some huge money amount that we were voting on and it was close and it didn't include your town phoning up any money, then I probably would say maybe you should choose yourself from the vote. But that hasn't been the, the practice and, and no one's brought it up before. I, I think it should be delayed. I don't think it should be addressed right now. I think we we're trying to put together a, a, um, <clears throat> an alliance and because I'm, I'm not sure if they see anything in for them in being on the board, to tell you the truth. So we, we need to somehow sweeten the pot to keep them involved. Okay, just one comment before I call on Doug Hoyt. Uh, one of the thinkings is through their contract with Montpelier, when Montpelier has expenses around dispatching, it gets added to their contract. So there's an indirect contribution in a way. That's all I want to say. Uh, Doug Hoyt? I think uh, there's a lot of good points that have been made here. Um, but I think if we don't make the right decision here, after the 23rd, you won't have to make a decision because the decision will already be made for you. I fear that Capital Fire has heard various things over time about this money issue when really the board has not brought up the issue of money. Um, and they are a little reluctant to participate. Um, I would not at all be terribly surprised if the Capital Fire Mutual Aid Group votes on the 23rd to end its relationship with Central Mount Public Safety Authority. Um, I think it's really important that we follow up on what Jim was saying in terms of going a little bit slower here, letting them know that we want to have their participation in this process. And they're not making any really big decisions on any large amounts of money. We're all talking about the same thing. And I, for one, would love to have them sitting at the table with us in terms of reaching some of these decisions um, in terms of what the radio systems are going to look like. Driving them away from the table will not accomplish that. I'll be quiet. So, sorry. Uh, anyone else opinion on this? Yes, I do, Steve Whitaker. Okay, I'm just making sure I didn't miss any board members. Okay, Stephen. So, the, the Capital Fire joined this because the two cities were under pressure to get a third member. It's not been an ideal 
relationship it, that one year free without paying the cost sharing was intended to be a year while you sort it out. It spans, this is the fourth year. But I've been talking to select board members around the area, and they recognize that this is not an ideal scenario because the financial commitments, the long range planning, the decision whether we're only planning for LMR or planning for LTE as well, those are select board decisions. What we need to do is invite the Capital Fire members to ask their towns to make them the delegates, but the towns need to join. Capital Fire has no authority to raise its dues to the, the, the member towns of Capital Fire are paying for dispatch service to make up a third share of the cost of our Televate contracts. It, 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 it's just not a workable scenario. Uh, it, it's a square peg in a round hole. Capital Fire is not the legitimate intermediary between CVPSA and the towns that need to join. So I, I welcome the individuals to ask their towns to be the delegates, but the towns need to join in order to get this uh, Gordian knot undone, you know? Okay, thank you. Thanks. Please mute. Uh, that's, all right. So. What's the board's pleasure? Do we want to pursue? I'd like to make one other comment. Okay. Doug, uh, this isn't about money. It's about, can we have an organization that works together? And yes, of course, that could have involved proportional contributions. You know, the total population of the towns exceeds that of the two cities. They could, they could have a majority on the board. And we could divide the costs as we already have. Uh, you know, we put a stab at it, that the cost would be divided by the amount of benefits that each get. Uh, and there's formulas for that. So the idea is, is there, I think it's the only way for the towns to find a way to get what we all want them to have, which is a radio system that works and protects firefighters. Um, and you know, they've served the communities they served for years, and they've done a wonderful job. But we're now at a crisis where we need to have a different. All I want to do is talk. I don't want to, I want to have a clear understanding of where we're going. And it's the lawyer in me that says, if you make a deal, you honor the deal. You don't just drift around and do what you feel like doing. And, uh, uh, Kim, do you want to make a motion? Well, I just move that uh, when they're ready, they come talk to us about the best way uh, to work together. And I think we should, I mean, uh, if they got a meeting in the next couple of weeks, if they'll hear me, I'll explain why I think we could help each other. Um, and then I'd like them to come and meet with our board or some. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, Kim, if you're planning to go to their meeting and talk on behalf of the board, you'll need a motion to get direction from the board. Well, I would like that's that. what happened with that memo. I mean, it needs, I mean, that's what I'm looking for is board support for your memo, board support for you being the spokesperson or not, because otherwise you're just an individual talking. So, well, I'm not unhappy to be an individual. Oh, okay. Uh, but I, I do think. I but mean, you can make a motion and see if you can get board support. Well, okay. I move we ask the uh, uh, Mutual Aid Society to meet with selected members of our board to discuss 
um, what our relationship should be, should be. And presumably that would be in March. Well, uh, like the ask uh, Capital FAR mutual aid uh, system to meet with us to redefine the relationship or to define what they want in the relationship? What, I just want to discuss what the relationship, okay. to discuss what, what could be mutual advantageous to us. All right. Is, is there a second to that? Second. Okay. Uh, Justin is seconding. Kim, your hand's still up. Oh, sorry. That's all right. Okay. Any further discussion about this? Okay. Uh, Jim, you're muted. Can I hear the motion? Uh, Brent, you want to read it back? What I have is <clears throat> Kim, Kim motioned to ask Capital Fire to meet with selected members of the CVPSA Board of Directors to define the relationship and determine mutually beneficial advantages to such relationship. Okay. Does that sound right, Kim? It's good enough, yes. Okay. Any further discussion on that motion? All in favor, say aye. I move we table. Aye. I'm sorry, what? I move we table it to next month. Okay, that would need a second. Is there a second to tabling this to next month? Okay. So the motion stands. Kim, uh, Doug Hoyt, are you waving? I just, no, I'm mute. Yeah, I know. There seems to be some indecision here about whether that's the good way to go or not. Um, Sally and or Will, I'd like to call upon you to somehow help us a little bit here. Um, I know that based on what you said, you've just received information about this meet, special meeting, and it's going to involve relationship with the Public Safety Authority. Is there anything in your opinion that will benefit us, meaning the Public Safety Authority, from communicating with Capital Fire in terms of what that relationship should look like? before you have a vote to do away with it. I'm putting you on the spot, but you know, person to person, professional to professional, I'd like, I'd like to hear from you. So this is Will. So I guess I would just have to say, I, I can't say anything further until we have the meeting on the 23rd, because I have no idea what the uh, rest of the mutual aid members um, are thinking. So, you know, I, we just, Sally and I just learned of this today. So the meeting is going to inform us on the 23rd and we'll know better after the 23rd. So I, I don't think we have anything further to add. All right. I was just trying to help. Okay. Uh, Brent, you have your hand up. When we talk about, <clears throat> when, when we're thinking about Kim's motion, who, who, when we say selected board members, who would these board members be? Who would be selecting them? The board would, would appoint a committee. So people would express interest and the board would decide who represented them. The thing would be, I mean, we can invite them. They may say yes, they may say no. They may say they wanna wait till after the 23rd, who knows? Any other comments? All right. Chair, All yes, I, Oops. Jim? No, Steve I'm Whitaker. Sorry. Uh, no, Steve Whitaker. I uh, still have some board members. Uh, yes, Jim? My, my only reason for tabling it is 
I wouldn't want to send any signals to them at this point that might adversely impact them. If we could be guaranteed on a positive signal, that'd be great, but we're not guaranteed that. So I'm hoping that they decide to stay with us, if that's the, what the question is. Um, but I don't want to make any more trouble than we already have in terms of getting into the payment and, and what they may owe us or, or so forth. But I was just trying to not put any pressure on their vote. Uh, well, my understanding is that this MOU, this memo from Kim about the MOU, MOA, got a reaction from them that was not positive. And That's that was, sure. yeah, so that was part of it. So maybe actually extending and sitting down and talking to them can balance that out. It can go both ways. Yes, it can go both ways. Again, you invite, you don't know what they'll do. All right, yeah. any other but, comments, but uh, not- Steve? I'm sorry, Doug. Yeah, but you're not. To Jim's point, if the if the message that they stay where they're at and they're still feeling like that, what are we going to accomplish between now and the 23rd to talk to them about what the future holds? If you don't if you don't take any action between now and the 23rd. To talk to the capital fire, their last thoughts are going to be what's going to be making their decision. Yes. So it might be worth the effort to try to have a meeting between now and then, have a little chat. Yeah, I would think. <laughs> Get them in a better mindset. <laughs> well, at least find out what's what's really making them want to leave. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, other board members want comments? Uh, Steven, you wanna make a comment? Please make it very brief and to the point. Yeah, I, I think that whoever your committee, I think maybe the, the people you appoint uh, might be, should be part of the motion and maybe uh, insist that this appoint subcommittee meet with the principals of CVPSA before the 23rd. Otherwise, this is all going to be a wasted effort. Um, but yes, you really Steve. got, you got, in effect, what you have is uh, the, they got what they need with, with which we paid for, which was the, the funded proposal. So they think they can out, outrun and run on, on their own now. So if you can't get Saruti and Altsworth and Will, uh, you know, to, to see the advantages of strengthening a one single regional organization, uh, then they they need to withdraw. So I would encourage that Kim, you to consider amending your motion to meet, have your subcommittee specify your members, and have your subcommittee meet with them before the twenty third. Okay, Thanks. Stephen. Thank you. Please mute. Um, I would suggest we keep the two motions separate. One, let's decide if we want to invite them and then decide who. Is that agreeable? We have a motion on the table unless somebody wants to make a motion to amend it. We're we're voting on the invitation to them. And then we'll do another motion as to who. Okay, all in favor of inviting a meet with them? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? passes. Okay, now we'll entertain a motion as to who is on the committee. Sit down and meet with them. Doug is our liaison, so I presume he would be chair of this committee? Or can you? Uh, You're muted again, sorry. I would like I would like to be on the committee with Doug and Brent and Justin. When is this meeting going to take place? Well, well we're going to have to do it next week sometime. I mean, you'd have to call them, uh, Doug, and extend the invitation and try to work out a date. And maybe you can't do it. Uh, you know, it's it's very much last minute. 
I, I would just, you know, yeah. I mean, right now, Kim, I'm not sure you're the best person to go there because they're upset about your memo. But I mean, that's a board to decide. I'm just saying that's a reality. Well, uh, uh, Jim, you want to unmute yourself? I, I think trying to appoint the committee at a board level um, will be difficult. And I would move that the chair select a committee. Is there a second to that? I don't, I'm, under normal circumstances, I would say that would be a good idea, but yeah, I think our chair has taken a lot of lightning bolts from a lot of places and for reasons that should not have occurred. Uh, I think we all ought to be strong people and say, yes, I'll volunteer for this and put somebody in front of it. So with that in mind, I would volunteer to do that. Um, Jim, I think you've got some good inside information and I'd like you to participate as well. Um, My only concern is the amount of time, but um, it's only one meeting, so I will volunteer. Yes, I only see one meeting. And Justin, I really think you got a good head on your shoulders and I would like to see you participate as well. I know. A, a new face, and I, I presume remotely, so it might be a little bit easier. No transport, no transporting. Uh, so, it, is that a, a motion for Doug, Jim, and Justin to represent us, or can we just all give a thumbs up? Okay, thank you all. Thank you. I, I saw a little thumb, thumbs up from Sally. It was down in the right hand corner. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, and thanks, Kim, for bringing this up. Okay. Um, anything else needs to come before? We're like over 30 minutes beyond. Thank you all for hanging in there. Really, really appreciate it. Lots of good discussion, difficult. Otherwise, I'm going to adjourn the meeting by unanimous. No, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold oh, on. What, what? Sally, Sally, who's the. Who's the person I should reach out to for? Uh, Skip Bothfeld is president of Capital Fire Mutual Aid, and uh, Paul Cerruti is chair of the communications committee. All right, so so either Skip or Paul or both of them. Correct. Okay. And I have one more thing to say, Donna, under other sure. business. Um, okay. I just wa want, for the record, I guess, for the minutes to show um, the letter that we all saw today that Mr. Whitaker sent to Televate, he referred we multiple times in it. I just wanted to make very clear that that we, he is not part of CVPSA and that is not reflected on us. Agreed. Agreed, thank you. I think we all agree with that, Sally. All right, now I can adjourn the motion meeting. Thank you all. Have a good evening. What's left of it? Bye. Bye. Good night. Night.